All right, welcome back to another Cools Reviews. Again, like last week's episode, it's another short one as we delve back into the Jurassic World world and watch Battle at Bayrock. Uh, for a lot of you, you guys probably saw this last year during the pandemic. Uh, they released this to kind of give everyone something to look forward to as well as hype up the new movie. So... Obviously the movie was delayed and we've gotten a couple additional scenes because of that. And hopefully it's for the better, right? Hopefully a little bit more time, a little bit more thinking the story gets a little bit better, the effects get really good. You know, sometimes a little extra time does not hurt. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the actual short. It's ten minutes long compared to the last one, which is about five, I think. Yeah, five. Um, this one follows a family camping out in the woods. And, you know, they're eating dinner, and a new Ceratops family comes in, starts, you know, scrounging through their food, much like you'd see in wildlife today. Mm -hmm. And then an Allosaurus appears, and, you know, they fight, because it's called Battle of Big Rock. The two had a fight, and then that's kind of where it ends for them, because then the bull and the Pseudoceratops kind of breaks up that fight. And then the baby cries, so the Allosaurus attacks you know, the trailer, the camper, flips that over, destroys the camper, like, completely. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm okay with this. If we get more Jurassic Park like this, it's not fully dark or fully rated R or anything, but this might be the best we can get. And still... There should be a rated R one, though. There should be. I think that would yeah, be see. really good. I mean, Lost World, I think, kind of tried to get dark, and then people didn't like it, but a lot of people didn't like it because it didn't follow the book at all. And, you know, that's a discussion for another time. So uh, we're just going to talk about, I guess, favorite parts or what we enjoyed, what we didn't enjoy. If you guys want to talk the dinosaur designs at some point, let me know. I'll do that to you. Sam? I like the beginning, which it made it seem like the world had just been overrun by dinosaurs at that point. And they're just like, so is this the new normal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, part I didn't like was... The battle with the Allosaurus, because Allosauruses are usually pack hunters, and for it to only be one was a little... Well, I think, too, this is supposed to be the juvenile grown-up that escaped at the end of the last movie. Oh. So. But normally, Allosauruses are pack hunters, so but at least a group mm, of three. It's questionable. They definitely aren't portrayed as pack hunters, especially, at least in uh, Ballard of Big Al or Walking with Dinosaurs. Well, the other mainstream media, you see it, uh, obviously because they're bones now and footprints are hard to tell, it's, there's no real definitive answer as far as that. But to bring down a large solar pond, they would have had to at least cooperate at some point, for sure. Andrew? Uh, crossbow scene is probably my favorite. Mm. Yeah, there is a, during the beginning of the video, they had a little reference where, uh, the dad didn't want the neighbors to um, let their eight-year-old child play with a crossbow. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it's kind of what saved him in the end. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. Jeez. Oh, my bad. I mean, <laughs> it's like saying a spoiler alert for The Godfather, you know. Right. Matt? Um, I think much along the lines of Sam on this one favorite part was um, this kind of already implies that the humans are used to now being with the dinosaurs. It wasn't like in the other um, previous movies where the humans are like, oh shit, a dinosaur, and then they start freaking out. This family looked like they were already used to seeing dinosaurs in the area. They were very comfortable mm -hmm. with the dinosaur. Not saying that you know right. they weren't freaking out though that it was that close to the base, but but it's not um, like the Lost World where the T Rex is in San Diego and they're right. all like. What the fuck's going oh, yeah. on? Well, what the hell is, I mean, that a, is that really a dinosaur? If you saw the T-Rex, you'd freak out. Nonetheless, it's <laughs> well, even if I were you used to it, even if, if I was used like, oh, to a T-Rex, right? <laughs> I mean, look how we come across <laughs> anything that would scare us. We but still are like, oh shit, man. Yeah, and we run. Selfies <laughs> with that. It's like gonna eat them. <laughs> well, <laughs> after seeing all the stupid videos from people like getting up on bears and bison and buffaloes, like, hey, hey, what's up, man? There was that lady that got really close to a grizzly and attacked her, and I was like, I don't know what you expected <laughs> from the grizzly bear. Well, yeah. You know, you put a dinosaur, in this case, an allosaurus, 
which was rather large for yeah. even an Allosaurus. <laughs> I'm going to get up there and get a selfie with it. Go ahead. Yeah, you get a selfie with that. You're wouldn't, wouldn't not going to last too long. Wouldn't feel bad for you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it was, that was probably my favorite part. And I said, it's excited, you know. Yeah. No, I definitely, like I said, I liked the tone of it. It was a little bit more dark in a way. Mm -hmm. And not quite a horror, but, you know, it had suspense. It kind of brought me back to, like, The Lost World or, you know, the original Jurassic Park. But at the same time, you're moving the franchise forward. Now you're in the wild of California, in this one at least. And it, the next one's going to probably have some snow in it. I mean, we've seen leaks of snow, and there's non-dinosaurs in it, possibly a Smilodon. I don't know. Spoiler yeah, for Cam. Colorado. Utah Let's go. Let's go up there and take a that look. That would be cool to see a Utah Because then, weren't they, like, pretty furred up? Yeah, they are the largest theropod with full body, like, covering that we've, at least that we've found. Like, China's really good for um, producing these fossils uh, just because they had the right, you know, sediment and stuff to actually, you know, fossilize. Because feathers and stuff like that, it's really hard to fossilize. For all we know, I don't think something like a Tyrannosaurus would be fully feathered. But, you know, a little bit of fuzz, like an elephant. Elephants still have hair, mm -hmm. even though they're super large. Rhinos, wells have hair still, so, mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, I do enjoy the Allosaurus design much better here than in Fallen Kingdom. Mm -hmm. They did they did good, you know, the hands again. Not broken. I think this is one of the first ones where they actually made the effort to correct that. Um, it's still not maybe 100% scientific accurate, but... I'm okay with it because it's Jurassic Parkified. Man, it's a movie. I'm fine. With it. I'm as long as it looks like the animal's supposed to be. It's cool. I want to see what the Jurassic Park universe animal looks like. You know. You know, like I said, it's a little bit big. It's more of a Sauropteryx as far as size goes. Because those... if you watch our Sam Noble um, museum vlog in Oklahoma, they actually have the 40-foot skeleton of one. And you know, it was, was actually it was about right because that camper wasn't that tall and it was it fit in the camper. But it was more the size of a sort of thing, and you know, as far as forty feet, because Allosaurus would be more twenty six to thirty feet, a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller head. Sort of thing, axe is pretty much a giant Allosaurus, which this was. I'm cool with it. Hey, maybe we'll get to see it take on some other dinosaurs. So. Much like we did last week, uh, we're going to say what we rate it and if it excites us. And again, maybe we'll add a third one. Does it excite you more than the last week's, you know, Jurassic World Prologue? So Sam, rating, does it excite you and does it excite you more than last week's episode? Mm, I mean, I'll give it another 10 and yeah, kind of. Last one had a Gigan, but this one has an Allosaurus. And this one's Allosaurus. I... Even though it's not 100%, that does look I think it good. looks pretty good, yeah. Much better than the Giganotosaurus. But we're not going to get back into that link above. All right, Andrew? I'd Giganotosaurus. probably give it an 8. Okay. Hey? About the same. 7 or 8. Makes, does this one want, make you want to see it more than the last one? No, about the same. About the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just two completely different spectrums. One felt like a documentary, one felt like, you know, normal a Jurassic. Normal movie. This one definitely had better acting in modern day, uh, but you know, obviously it had actual actors. The last one, one of the most prominent people had was the director's son, so it's a little kid that first saw the T Rex. Yeah, yeah um, I just stared at him. This one, I'm gonna go probably a nine. I'm gonna bump it up one grade. Um, with the grade raise. No, I don't feel like this one makes me want to see it more than the other one because I'm already seeing it regardless. So, um, it's not like it made it more special, but 9 out of 10 on that one. And, yeah, I'm ready to see it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, I think we've really decided in this week, especially, we are doing a video just like we do with Ghostbusters, you know. I've seen all of these in the theaters, so i got to keep that tradition up. Mm -hmm. You know, the first Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies. The second one's probably you got underrated. To see that movie, mm -hmm. How old were you? Yeah. Very young. It was my first movie. My second one was the Batman movie. 
and then, you know, I saw Lost World opening day, and then I saw Jurassic Park 3. I like the Easter egg with uh, Nigel in there. Nigel? Walking with dinosaurs. Yeah, now. Nigel Marvin? Yeah. Well, I love that there. They're also, it seems like, tying in Fast and the Furious into this movie, too. Oh, they want oh, yeah. to, and I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. <laughs> I, I know that's what they want to do. They want to make a crossover, Jurassic Park, Fast and the Furious. They said, hey, throw in Transformers, let's throw in G.I. Joe. Can we not? Can we not? Throw in the Avengers? Let's just throw every movie I'm in, the thinking. one movie in. Gotta throw I, some Avengers in there. I, I don't want I don't want a Marvel movie. <laughs> I don't want like to see in like the superhero movies just like the other superheroes just sitting there watching the other ones fight because they're all in the same universe. Yeah. That was kind of the uh, uh, me and Josh watched. It was that Teen Titans movie where they all go to the movies and they're watching their movies. No, I'm just seeing like the other superheroes just walking around casually, not helping out. So like Hancock. <laughs> mm, <sure. laughs> also, apparently, that's what the Eternals did too. They were super-powered human beings that let the world fall apart because that was their job to do. Yeah, I have not seen Eternals. I'm pretty far behind on Marvel movies. I might go pick some up, you know, because a couple of them have come out at least on Steelbook, Blu-ray, and that's when I buy stuff. Why are we on talking Marvels? This is okay. <laughs> <all right. laughs> But back to it, I, I think this does get me at least a little bit more excited than the other one. It's longer, it's more world building, and it's more of what we're probably going to see as far as the dinosaurs in the modern day. Uh, the last one, I think they took the prologue completely out, so I don't expect a lot of flashbacks. Um, which is okay, let's keep moving the franchise forward. Why did you give me that eye? All right, so well, no, you just like kind of contradicted what you said last week, where you were kind of hoping it would be like back and forth, like a time travel one. Where no, I said I wouldn't. Twenty minutes here, twenty minutes there. No, I said I wouldn't mind a full movie back in prehistoric. I don't want to jump back and forth. If they do and it works in the story, sure. But then they're gonna be like, well, the T Rex is a clone. It has the memories. But then it opens up. Why didn't Maisie know she was a clone in the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, then you're adding loopholes. Let's just not do it. Let's keep moving it forward. Your T-Rex looks great. Maybe not as good as the animatronic, but nothing's going to. We're looking at it right now. It's like on the screen. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that thing. I want that in my backyard. It's just a giant animatronic <laughs> What is that? Oh, it's a T-Rex. Oh, and here's the Spinosaurus. Uh, but, yeah, if you guys want to see more uh, Jurassic World stuff, let us know. Uh, we're more than happy to talk about it, as you can see. You know, we all enjoy it, and we're all willing to discuss it. If you want to see our previous Cools review about the new Jurassic World Dominion Prologue, click that link in front of Matt. If you want to see more about what we're doing here at Cools Paranormal, click that link in front of Sam. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a... Subscribe! subscribe. And switch that notification bell from personalized to all if you want to be notified on all of our videos. And let us know, which one did you enjoy better? The Dominion Prologue or Battle of Big Rock?